Hi and welcome to my new video on how to use the Arduino Uno and Digi's XB to set up a basic home automation system ready for the Internet of Things. I will show you how to switch a light bulb remotely from the Internet. Call the client unit the one in which the light bulb is plugged. Take a look at the circuit schematics. The circuit is composed of a power supply, an XB with its bells and whistles, and a relay circuit. The power supply was replaced by batteries in this demo. The Relay 1 and Relay 2 components use bipolar transistors to provide the sufficient currents to switch the relays. They are commanded by the two first digital I.O. pins of the XB. When those pins are switched to high, a current in the bipolar transistor is amplified and switches the relay. The LEDs are also turned on, indicate the closed state of the relay. You can see here the XB, the two LEDs, one of which is the associated LED of the XB. The battery acts as a power supply in this example providing current to the XB in the relay. This is where the bulb is connected, powering it on. We will see the associated LED indicating that the XB is properly configured and able to join the network. The Arduino UNO is used to retrieve information from the web and send the appropriate signals to the XB for it to switch on and off the bulb. The Ethernet shield is used to connect the Internet and retrieve the required information from the server. Finally, the XB shield provides a physical support to the XB. It also feeds it the appropriate power and converts the logical levels from the Arduino from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. The light bulb that we are going to control over the internet. Now we want to look at the configuration of the XBs. To enable the ZigBee Personal Area Network or PAN, we must configure one XB as a coordinator. The coordinator will be the controller XB and the client LB will remain in the router configuration. We use the XB adapter to connect the units via USB to the computer. It is very straightforward to use these adapters. Some will use the Arduino, removing the ATMEGA to use directly the FTDI chip. The separation is more complicated and it seems because you will need to use flow control, a feature that the Arduino doesn't provide in a straightforward manner. I highly suggest that you get an XB adapter or an FTDI cable to do this, you will save a lot of time. Then we configure the units using the Mac version of XCTU to set the PAN ID and load the correct firmwares. I will detect the XB, leave these settings to default and scan for devices. I will now detect the loaded parameters XB was detected. Now load the loaded parameters on the XB. Now, after this is done, I need to configure the PAN ID. PAN ID must match in both XBs, so this step must be taken in both units. Write the settings, I'll set it to EEEE, -E -E -E, but that could be anything. Writing the settings. Then I will load the coordinator's firmware for the unit to behave as coordinator. I choose the Zigbee Coordinator API and the newest firmware version. Notice that you will leave the other unit, the one in the circuit to which the bulb is connected, as a router. Router is the factory default firmware, so you won't need to go through the step of loading a firmware with the other XB if your unit is new. But remember, both XB must share the PAN ID, so the first step must be taken in both devices.
The next step is now to assemble the system. The Ethernet shield. Notice that the XB shield is I use is not made to work with the Ethernet shield. So in this configuration, it won't take the power from the Arduino. This is why I will now use a jumper wire to bring the 5 volts and ground pin to the XB shield to bypass the Ethernet shield. The Ethernet, the XB shield doesn't have pins, so that will take the 5 volts and ground from the Ethernet shield, so you must use jumper wires. I will then plug the bulb in the client unit. Ready? Okay. For the shield to have access to the web, I use internet sharing and I plug the shield in the RJ45 plug of my MacBook, but uh, it will also work if it was plugged into my router. Now we're ready for takeoff. When I select, I use my, my phone to access the web and from the page on the web I can select on to turn off the light bulb. When I select on and click the toggle lamp state button on the website, the lamp, go, the lamp goes on. Can I turn it off by selecting off and, and clicking on toggle lamp state button, it goes off. I program the web page using a little PHP. It will store the desired state up to an HTML page in the form of a letter, either Y for, for on or N for off. It will also write some HTML meta tags that are important so the servers and browsers will not cache the page. If the page was cached, the state wouldn't be updated. Now, let's take a look at the Arduino code. We will connect and read the page containing the state of, of the lamp to update it. We must send a set of bytes called the frames to the coordinator so that it switches on or off the pin to which the bulb is connected. These frames are stored in the characters arrays LEDD1 on and LEDD1 off that you can see. The setup of the Ethernet shield is almost identical to how it's done in the example provided by Arduino. Now the main loop. The main steps taken in this part are encapsulated in the methods update lamp state and read requested states, which are called at the bottom. The methods do as their name implies. The first method, update lamp states, needs to know the requested states and actual state. It will switch the lamp if there is a difference. It does so by sending the set of bytes that we have seen earlier to the XB through the hardware serial pin on the Arduino. It returns the new lamp state so the program can track the actual state of the lamp for further calls of the method. The requested state uses the internet client to connect to the website, request the correct page, and parse the HTTP reply of the server to know what state is requested. It's a pretty straightforward implementation, it can be reproduced quite easily. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Alright, thanks for watching.